Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Leverone. I'm a veterinarian at Reading Animal Clinic here in Reading, Mass. I'm also a volunteer veterinarian at the Alaska Iditarod race. My family and I went to um, visited Alaska in the summer of 2011. And uh, one of the many things we did there was visit uh, the uh, kennels of the, the Seavey family uh, near, near Seward, Alaska. And uh, between that and visiting Iditarod headquarters in Wasilla, it made me realize that uh, the Iditarod is a very big deal in Alaska. And uh, uh, many, many volunteers, including volunteer veterinarians, are needed to, to um, get the race going every year. I did do the race uh, two weeks worth in 2012, um, and uh, including a um, three-day education seminar uh, prior to the start of the race, um, which all novice uh, uh, volunteers have to take. The race starts on the first Saturday of March every year and uh, generally runs uh, about 14 days. The uh, record for completing the race is about eight and a half days. Uh, some people take longer than two weeks to do it. So all in all, anywhere from 45 to 55 veterinarians participate in the race. Um, our role is to examine the dogs, all of them if possible, at every checkpoint. The race is uh, officially 1,049 miles long, uh, give or take, because there are two uh, changes in the route that take place on alternate years. There's a northern route and a southern route in the, the middle portion of the race. And um, so the, the mileage varies. <laughs> but, uh, there are something like two dozen checkpoints along the length of the trail between Anchorage and Nome. And um, as the racers progress, um, veterinarians need to be in place at, at the uh, checkpoints through which they're passing so that we can examine the dogs, try to pick up problems uh, before they become big problems, um, uh, assist the mushers with um, advice and medications, uh, things of that nature, take care of any dogs that they have to drop from the race, and, and many of them do. The, the mushers start with uh, a maximum of 16 dogs per team, and I believe they need to finish with at least five. Uh, movement up and down the trail is interesting and uh, again attractive to me. Uh, the Iditarod Air Force is the only way to move people and personnel and supplies up and down the Iditarod Trail. So the Iditarod Air Force is a group of uh, approximately 14, I think, volunteer pilots. They, they're required to have uh, considerable experience as bush pilots, but they volunteer their time and their airplanes. The Iditarod Trail Committee pays for the gasoline. and. Um, but they, they ferry in their Cessna 185s and so forth. They ferry uh, the vets, uh, communications people, uh, the dogs back and forth, supplies back and forth, and uh, they're the lifeblood of, of the operation. Alaskan Huskies on the winning teams generally run 45 to 55 pounds, and they are quite lean. Uh, they're consuming anywhere from 7,000 to 10,000 calories per day. So, and studies have uh, shown that that's, uh, there, there's very little in the animal world that, that uh, consumes that much energy and puts out that much work. They like it best when it's 50 below. The trail is faster, and, and when it's too warm, the dogs can overheat. And during a 24-hour period, they probably um, are running maybe eight hours and split up into several, several um, uh, sprints, if you will. There are required rest stops 
for the teams throughout the race. You know, there's, there's one 24-hour layover where they're required to, to uh, stay at the checkpoint for 24 hours before leaving. And there are two other eight-hour layovers. And uh, um, one of these, you know, there's some checkpoints where the layover is required, and in other cases, um, the, the musher can do the layover at, at a checkpoint of their choosing. The vast majority of these dogs are, are just a pleasure to work with. Uh, very, most have very sweet dispositions. Uh, when they get into a checkpoint, especially further down the trail, they're exhausted. They just, you know, they look for the nearest pile of straw to, to lay in, uh, to get themselves off the snow. And uh, they, you know, the musher's first job when they get to a checkpoint is to take care of the dogs before they take care of themselves. Uh, so by the end of the race, these mushers are, are, are hallucinating from, from lack of sleep, lack of rest. Um, they suffer a lot more than the dogs do, I think. They wear booties um, uh, and sometimes uh, sleeves on the legs to, if they're punching through deep snow, crusty snow, then, then the backs of the legs can get injured so they can wear wear um, uh, sleeves on their legs. Um, they usually wear a, a, a coat um, to, over, over the body, over the chest and, and, the, and the back. Each dog has to undergo a, a thorough physical exam, including blood work and an electrocardiogram, and each is microchipped so they, they can be identified individually. Not the first year, but last year I did see the, the start of the race in downtown Anchorage. And that start is, is actually a, a ceremonial start. Uh, they only go about 18 miles that first day. And then they crate all the dogs up and then move, everybody moves to Wasilla to Iditarod headquarters and that's where the race officially starts on uh, the uh, first Sunday of March. The uh, first year I um, got to um, I think four different checkpoints out of the 24. Um, the second one on the trail is uh, called Squentna, and um, it's, uh, it's right on a, uh, the checkpoint is right on the frozen river that goes through there. I think it's the Squentna River. And um, uh, because it's so early in the race, the, uh, uh, the participants in the race are all bunched up. Um, so on that particular day, the, uh, the first musher came in, I think around 8.30 at night, and uh, it was solid work from there until 6 in the morning. And it was 20 degrees below that night. Um, it was the first time I got to see the Northern Lights, which was exciting. When we checked the dogs out, uh, there are certain forms that we have to maintain along the way to uh, try to keep track of, of um, the individual um, uh, canine athletes participating in the race, any particular problems they might have, anything we might want to look out down the road. You know, each checkpoint, you know, prior to the race even starting, each checkpoint, every musher has two or three burlap sacks of food for him, him or her, food for the dogs, spare parts, like runners for the uh, sled if they need that. Um, things of that nature. They're provided uh, with, uh, at each checkpoint, each must musher gets a, a bale of straw. First thing he does is open that up and shakes out a flake for each dog so they can lay on top of it. Some of the checkpoints are in uh, larger centers where, you know, one of them is at a, basically a, a, a lodge, I think. Uh, and uh, so there are indoor facilities there. In, um, and I'm not familiar with all of the places along the trail because I've only been to four or five checkpoints. Um, there are others like, like McGrath and Unicolite are larger towns, you know, 700, 800 people. And, and um, in those places, uh, there are community centers where, or where uh, people can go in, get a hot meal and sleep and even get a shower. And then there are other places where you know, it's a wall tent with a wood stove. Two other places I have been to are, are Koyuk and Elam. These are native villages uh, uh, along, along the Bering Sea. And uh, you're basically in um, like a community center there. 
Some of the places have, like in, in Squentna, which is the, the second checkpoint, um, the, um, there, there's kind of a, a, a lodge, a house, if you will, and the bottom floor is, there, there, there's a whole crew of, I don't know, at least two dozen people that um, most of them are from the Seattle area and they come every year and uh, a lot of them have been doing it for 15, 16 years. It is an incredible experience and it's a pleasure working with the dogs and trying to help them out. Uh, it's a pleasure working with the, the mushers for the most part. Um, you meet many, many people along the trail, not just other veterinarians, but people from all walks of life uh, who have an interest in the race and uh, who volunteer their time. Something like 2,000 volunteers are, are necessary to, to run this, this big event. And, uh, just the, the scenery is beautiful. Uh, I like being outdoors to begin with. Um, being able to see the northern lights, uh, being able to travel around in small planes, which I love too. Um, it's just a, a great all-around experience. <laughs>